Hello and welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's edition of the program, we'll be focusing on activities of the next meeting of the Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities. We also have new stories for you. We will be right back. The Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Associated Institutions has held its 2024 National Executive Council meeting to discuss the state of the nation and how it affects its members. Articulate Nassau. Vibrant Nassau. President of the Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Associated Institutions, Makolo Asan, during the conference, alleged the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, of ignoring the presidential directive instructing the payment of 50% without salaries of the union members. He also reacted to the recent hike in PMS. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has brought significant embarrassment to the nation by failing to revive and maintain the functionality of government-owned refineries, which remain largely non-operational, despite years of promises and investment. Instead of focusing on restoring these vital assets to reduce the country's reliance on imported petroleum products, the NNPCL has diverted its effort towards positioning itself as a monopolistic player in the distribution of petrol from Dangote refinery. We condemn this shift because NNPCL appears more concerned with controlling market share than fulfilling its core mandate of ensuring domestic refining capacity. The ivory of the NNPCL, a state-owned enterprise, neglecting its own refinery while competing for influence over private out sector output, underscores its inefficiencies and has deepened public frustration over the nation's uh, energy crisis. Our union's financial contributions aid the stability and smooth functioning of, con of the Congress, while our moral commitment is reflected in our advocacy for workers' rights and social justice. By upholding these obligations, NASA will strengthen the unity and effectiveness of the labor movement in Nigeria. Tackling insecurity is essential to restoring peace, which is a foundation for economic uh, development and social cohesion. Likewise, combating corruption will improve governance, attract foreign investment, and enhance public trust in institutions. Economic reform focused on job creation, inflation control, and infrastructure development will foster growth and reduce poverty. Investment in healthcare and education is critical to, uh, to nurturing a skilled and healthy population capable of driving innovation and productivity. Stakeholders at the event spoke about the educational sector and efforts made by other stakeholders to sustain the labor movement. Socioeconomic and political situations in the region post-COVID continues to worsen. Across the region, the economic situation triggered IMF bailouts with their conditionalities, that is austerity, cuts in public service wages, tax increases on wages and consumer goods, removal of food and fuel subsidies, which worsens already severe hardship on workers and their families. Trade union leaders who are vocal about the, the hardship and against the political class face severe repression and attacks using state apparatus such as the police and the military. The president of the National Nigeria Labor Congress is a constant target. In solidarity with the Nigeria's NLC president, PSI's general secretary and the regional leadership issued statements that contributed to the international attention and outcry against oppression and attack of trade union leaders in Nigeria and the region. By educational institutions, it's not just defined by what happens in the classroom, but by the support system that keeps everything running smoothly, from administrative duties, to technical support, from maintaining the learning environment to managing vital resources. Your roles have always been essential 
for the smooth operation of our institutions. In these challenging times, marked by economic hardships and the rapid evolution of technology, there is need for us to come together as a united front. Members of the union unanimously demanded the reversal of the recent hike in petrol price. It is now on our owners as a member to keep pressing. You know, there is a lot of struggle I have from what we have been able to see here. But the joy here is that we saw that we, we, we are on the, on the track, the track of making our present administration to understand that any nation, any country that wants to go far should not toy with its educational sector, research sector and health. These are the key components of any country, even advanced countries. So our take home is that we keep pressing, you know, we keep pressing until our aim and objective for this country, for our workers to attain that goal we are aiming at is achieved. So that is part of the take home from this place. If you notice that they started with primary education then, we start having this many, many private primary school. After they bastardized that one, they went into secondary school. Now they are targeting the tertiary institution. So that means that they want to take that education away from the poor people. You know, when you are educated, you are knowledgeable enough. Nobody can toss you up and down. The only weapon somebody can use to destroy human being or nation is to make sure that they bastardize the education. That is why. Then the second thing about the worker there is about uh, enslaving the worker. You know, any organization that does not have union, union serves as a, a kind of, do I say, opposition to the government on bad policies. The union that is NASU, uh, we are not uh, treated uh, as critical stakeholders during the inaugural uh, uh, ceremony, and which uh, is portraying uh, uh, injustice uh, to NASU. So therefore, I think my take is to appeal to government to ensure that uh, justice equity uh, is uh, extended to all the critical stakeholders in the university. That is the full uh, uh, staff based union in the universities and inter university centers. So that at the end of the day, we can sign agreement without uh, going back on strike or without bringing another problem. We try our best over the years to ensure that. Uh, our government, uh, this private university allow us to to have unions, but uh, they refuse. Uh, we try our best. We met many, many different ministers of labor or of employment, and we have around discussion. But still, and that is bringing uh, injustice to the system. And it is not establishing this private university that will bring our standard of education in Nigeria. You will see during convocations of these private uh, universities, you find out that more than 300, 500 students were coming out of first class. Not that they are better than the public universities. I think government need to look at that and also to increase funding of the public university so that the public university can compete globally. <music> On the profile interview segments this week, I was speaking with the General Secretary of NASU. He brings us up to speed on some of the challenges his members are faced with, while also preferring solutions to some of the challenges the education sector is faced with. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much for and, having me. And congratulations on a successful outing of your next meeting. Thank there you. were several issues that were, that were discussed. Some described the issues as a thesis on its own. But in summary, can you tell us uh, what's your message to relevant stakeholders as regards issues that affect the union, most especially as regards um, the welfare of your members? Don't forget, uh, thank you very much. Uh, NASU covers a whole range of uh, sectors, and we have uh, the neck had to touch on all the sectors and uh, for the universities our main focus right now is the unpaid salaries of four months of our members and we are 
we are astonished that despite the fact that uh, Mr. President already gave approval for 50% of that four months of pay salary be paid, it's over, it's over two months now that directive of Mr. President has been given to the Minister of Finance. We are shocked that up to now, nothing has been done. NEC had mandated us that if the salary is not paid in the next two weeks or so, that our members should go on total strike. And we are going to strictly abide by the decision of the NEC on that. We are also, as far as the university and the university center is concerned, we are also, the NEC also directed that we should play active part in the renegotiation committee of the outstanding unimplemented part of our 2009 FDA NASU agreement. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, the Yayali committee that was put in place, that was inaugurated two days back, despite the fact that we were humiliated at the inauguration, we had the mandate of NEC to push ahead with the, with the renegotiation process and put behind us what happened at the inauguration. Uh, when it comes to the schools and colleges, you, you know we cover schools and colleges too. Our main focus in schools and colleges is that the federal government, the former government under President Muhammad Buhari, uh, approved this 65 years retirement and 40 years in service to the, the, the teachers. And uh, the next director that we should pursue the aspect of the neg neglect and that we should resist. That the school system runs not only by the teaching people, but also by the non-teaching. And as a result of that, we have decided that we should push ahead with our, our struggle for the extension of that package to our non-teaching staff in schools and colleges across the length and breadth of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. For poly, we are also going to be asking for the renegotiation of the agreements and the scheme of service that was uh, approved by the Office of the Head of Service, which we have rejected, and it has been suspended. LBT directed that the scheme of service should be suspended. We want quick action to be taken on that so that we can move ahead. Colleges of Education, we have also analyzed the situation there, and we think that our members deserve to be better treated, but we commend the federal government for agreeing to allow a whole number of colleges of education to begin to run degree, degree programs. Mm -hmm. That for us is also a forward uh, movement. For examination bodies, uh, what we are saying is that, includes the libraries, is that the state government should wake up from their slobber and fund their libraries. Mm -hmm. There's need for state, go state government, state libraries to, to function efficiently. We should have modern libraries. Mm -hmm. We have, we, have, we have gone beyond this idea of uh, libraries that are having books in shelves. So we ask the state government to be proactive. And then we have the issue of the research, research and projects institutions, where we are owed 12 month salaries hmm. for, for almost seven, eight, nine years now on reserve. So NEC also has directed that we should push for that, using all legitimate means to get the, this area speed by government. The last but not the least is uh, the fact that NEC also said that we should work collaboratively with the NLC so that all issues that has to do with the issue of these incessant increases in the prices of petrol uh, products should stop because the, 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 the negative impact on the on our members is extremely unacceptable. They are no longer able to even go to work. Yeah. Uh, it has to be said clearly here that this economic reform 
is <laughs> not in the interest of the masses. There must be faith in this economic reform of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Without this economic reform having human face, it then means that a whole lot of human beings would have died before the end of this so-called reform. This reform is also not, it doesn't show on even those that are occupying very big offices because there is, there is extravagance at, at the top level. People are living in no pullers. Top government functionaries are living in no pullers. They are driving the exotic cars. Why average, an ordinary Nigerian cannot afford uh, three square meal. They can't even enter vehicles. Some of them trek from se for several kilometers from their home to their places of work. It's important at the next as directed that we should appeal to President Bola Ahmed Chinobu that he should allow this economic reform of his government to have some human face so that half of Nigerians wouldn't have gone with this economic reform before the better day that they talk about will come. It's good for all Nigerians to enjoy the better day, not that they will die of hunger before the better day comes. We ask this president to reverse, and that is the position of, of Nasunek, to reverse this last increase. It's unjustifiable, it's uncalled for, it's purely an act of wickedness. So this is how far we have gone. We often talk about funding of education. Because if you don't fund the Absolutely. education, then there are going to be a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So I think in a, in a summary, this is what the NEC has discussed. Okay, moving forward, um, after a successful conference, um, personally there's an observation I have in the labor movement, and that is um, collective bargaining agreement being honored. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at even the last um, encounter you had with um, a committee that was set up, um, what would be your message to relevant stakeholders, especially the government, towards ensuring that um, there is harmony and there is um, effective communications according to the rules um, that guide the operation of industrial relations? I, I, obviously, the, even the, the, the chairman of the, the negotiating committee, Alaji uh, Ayale, also mentioned the need for the unions and the government in the process of this renegotiation to ensure that what will be contained, what will be the final outcome of the renegotiation, will result in an agreement that is implemented uh, on, on, on like what we have had in the past, where government team we not we not seek for the proper mandate mm. or there is a situation where you have a government negotiating team constituted by the federal government with those who don't have power mm. to commit the government so we think that the major problem has to do with the fact that you constitute a, a negotiating committee and that renegotiating committee does not have power to commit. So eventually, when they eventually enter into this agreement, mm -hmm. government will just walk away from those agreements. And that, those are issues where we intend to place even before this renegotiating committee mm -hmm. that we are not going to agree to a situation where after government had agreed mm -hmm. with us through the negotiating committee, government will turn around. This problem is government problem. Because those who have negotiated with us in, in the past are appointees of government. Mm. And they, most times they even adjourn the negotiating meeting to say they want to consult with their principals. Mm. They come back, commit to the government, and only for government to turn around and say they cannot implement. I think the government should develop the will to negotiate honestly mm. and stop deceiving the uh, the unions. Mm. That's the only way out. It's After a, a government is continuum, because yes. it might be this argument about, yeah, oh, we're well, not the one that, that negotiated. That, that agreement is, uh, is signed by the former government. Mm. So it, it, it's not implementable. We can't we can accept it. If the government accepts the asset, 
they should also be ready to accept the liability. The truth of the matter is that the crisis and the challenges that we have witnessed in the past in the university, the university center, and even other tertiary institutions like polytechnics and colleges of education, is as a result of government not keeping to its part of the bargain. Very quickly, I want you to react to the proliferation of private universities and um, the demand for quality education. Every corner you go to now, you find private universities. And when you want to look at the welfare of even the workers there, that might not be a same agreement to have now. But what would be your take on this? I, th I think corruption is the, the bane of this thing that we are having. Every, there is competition now as to how much new universities the government in power approves. Which really is not supposed to be the case. The government is not doing what is right. There is arbitrariness, there is lack of even standard. You approve all of these private universities, you are indirectly lowering the standard of education. Some of them are operating at high level, but some are also not operating at high level. Where are the checks and balances? Who monitors what happens with those private, private universities? Even the, the fee they pay, the charge, who, who monitors those fees? Because some of them are charging outrageously, and they have, with impunity, even infringe on the constitution of the country. Because every state university insists that there shouldn't be a state university, there shouldn't be a trade union. So who checks them? We have had a situation where some of the things they do are clearly condemnable. I think, I, I think the issue of state institutions, state university, private university, I'm sorry, is something that we really need to review. The federal government has to review what it's doing now. I think it's a fundamental problem which will ask the federal government to, to review the approach. There may be need to establish more universities, both at the level of the state and the private, but there must be a standardized pro forma of how those universities should run and what they should pay to their staff. Very quickly, um, looking at the price of goods and services, the way inflation has quadrupled over time, are there any recommendations from your union, owing to the fact that it's a, it's a respected union and have um, intellectual people in it? Our position is simple. For as long as there is this drive to allow the, the Nigerian currency, to be floating. Because previous government also knew what they were doing when they were trying to help the Naira. It was a deliberate attempt to save Nigerians. You float the Naira, you remove subsidy at the same time. These are, these are unfair policies. So that's why we said, because the price of the PMS drives a lot of things in our country. It drives even with the rent you pay, it drives transport. Transport, it drives even what you pay for uh, food and whatever. Because you can't even get these things to, to the market without using transport. So for as long as we continue, and if you have seen the the the, 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 the statistics from the uh, uh, Niger 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 uh, Buru uh, uh, service you will find that it has been very, 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 very outrageous between May 29, 2023 and now. I think the, our advice to government is that government should slow down, strengthen, find a way of strengthening the value of the currency and then reduce or remove this last increase in the fuel of uh, PMS. When you do that, even if things doesn't go down the way it used to be, there will be some level of stabilization because in Nigeria it's difficult when things are going up it for never comes to down. come back. <laughs> but by the time you continue increasing and increasing, then we will, it will be uneasy. It will not be possible for ordinary Nigerians to be able to go to market and, and, and buy things. Today, everybody in Nigeria will tell you that life uh, is no longer what it used to be. Thank you very much for your time.
My pleasure. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijason. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth. Thank <laughs> you.